that's because aspartame, when it's metabolized in the body, is broken down into uh, methyl alcohol, which is wood grain alcohol, and um, uh, basically an embalming preservative as well, uh, formaldehyde, for those of you who are familiar with it, uh, which again is also neurotoxic. So those are three of the nastiest things we can do. Uh, the other thing we tend not to do is provide ourselves with good nutrition, don't take multivitamins, we don't eat our seven-day fruits and vegetables a day, all those sorts of things uh, take a very large toll on our central nervous system. Uh, sleep deprivation, there's another thing. If we are deprived of REM stage sleep, our learning will decrease, as will our ability to emotionally process things. If we miss out on stage four deep sleep, we'll actually reduce the amount of growth hormone released in our body, uh, and growth hormone is absolutely essential. It's, it's our youth hormone. It's essential for regeneration, both neurologically and, and physically as well. Uh, you can actually kill a person by three days of sleep deprivation. That's how important sleep is. And yet so many of us go through life sleep deprived, uh, almost like the walking dead, the walking zombies, uh, simply because we haven't designed our life in a way that allows us to do healthy things like getting enough sleep. Uh, there's toxicity, and toxicity can really be broken down into two different areas. Uh, there's internal toxicity and external. Uh, clearly, we're living in a more toxic environment now than we were a couple hundred years ago. There's more pollution, there's more stuff in the soil, uh, the nutrients in our food aren't what they used to be. Uh, so to be aware of that, and uh, instead of living in a cave or trying to go away where there is not, none of that, because that's just not realistic for a lot of us, what I encourage a lot of people to do is take time once a year just to do a cleanse. There's a cleanse you get at a health food store. If you want to get more deeply into it, you can visit a naturopath who does that kind of work. But just to take time to cleanse your body out can make a huge difference overall in taking care of your body. Uh, internal toxicity has to do more with the food that we eat, uh, whether our gut is in good, uh, good order or whether it's dysbiotic, uh, which is a fancy way of saying that uh, do we have healthy bacteria in our colon or unhealthy. Uh, if we have yeast overgrowth, yeast infections, that can create problems with internal toxicity. These are all things to consider, and, and if you're wanting to pursue them, a naturopath is one of the best places to start. Uh, moving into the next one, we're looking at stress. Of all the things on this cycle, uh, stress is the worst offender for most of us. Stress is deadly. We're going to go into it in a little more detail uh, after we get past this particular slide. But uh, suffice it to say, stress releases chemicals into our bloodstream, which overstimulate our entire body, uh, doubly so for our brain and certain structures of our brain, and we can literally induce brain damage if we've been exposed to enough stress. Uh, there is, of course, physical damage. Uh, the obvious is from things like car accidents and bad falls, uh, certain uh, athletic injuries, whether it's a blow to the head, somebody's uh, boxing, soccer sometimes does it, uh, or it may just be repetitive type things that somebody's not even all that aware of, may even be from birth trauma. So if you suspect physical damage or you have had an accident, get that checked out. It can often lead to uh, a lot of problems with your central nervous system. And the final one is oxygen starvation. You can see the picture there is, is the obvious, you know, it can happen during birth. But actually the most common source of oxygen starvation for us these days is uh, flying in planes. While planes fly at 30,000 feet, they're pressurized at 8,000 feet. For any of you who've spent any times in mountains, you know at 8,000 feet, if you try and climb even a flight of stairs, you'll be winded by the time you get to the top. Our brain requires, even though it's only 3% of our body mass, requires 30% of our oxygen intake. And when we're reduced to oxygen uh, for more than two hours, we're actually creating a brain dysfunction that usually takes two to three days to overcome. That's one of the sources of jet lag when we're doing long hauls either uh, over the Atlantic or heading west over the Pacific. Uh, if you're in a plane for more than two hours, you are creating minimal brain damage for yourself, uh, which if you're in business is a dangerous thing to think about uh, because it means you're going to meetings without uh, all your faculties intact. And finally, there's exercise. Exercise, particularly aerobic exercise that flushes the brain, flushes the rest of the body, full of oxygen is very, very important uh, at two levels. One, of course, lots of oxygen and nutrients. Uh, the other piece is whenever you move, you're firing brain, you're making all sorts of connections within the brain, so you're helping to build a brain tissue and uh, establish and maintain brain resiliency. So now let's take a look at the effects of stress on your brain. Very important. The effects of stress on your brain include uh, increased release of cortisol and adrenaline. So cortisol and adrenaline excite neurons in a part of the brain called the hippocampus. And the hippocampus 
is the part of the brain that is responsible for short-term memory. It converts short-term memory into long-term memory. Now, these excited neurons uh, will actually store memories better for a bit of time. So that's why sometimes people say, I work better under stress. Well, the cortisol and adrenaline release, they fire up the brain, the brains are firing faster, and in a sense they do. The only issue is that chronic excitations of these neurons lead to their death. They literally burn themselves out. Okay, it's like having a car and driving it at the red line uh, for hours at end. When that happens, you're just going to fry some circuits. And when that happens, you literally get brain damage. They can show this on MRIs where uh, people who are in, in what we call, consider burnout, uh, their hippocampuses are actually about 20 to 30 percent smaller than people who are not experiencing burnout. Now, what does this cause? It causes memory impairments and trouble with focusing. So if you've ever been in that place where you just feel like, man, I, it's like I'm thinking through a fog, I just can't focus anymore, almost for sure, this is the effect of stress on your brain. Now, what are the effects of minimal brain dysfunction? Well, decreased focus, like we talked about. Decreased memory, poor sleep. If our brain is too fired up and too engaged with too much cortisol and adrenaline, you can't drop into stage four sleep, you can't regenerate, and so it becomes a self-perpetuating cycle. Fatigue sets in over time, of course. And if fatigue goes on for long enough, your adrenal glands can't handle it anymore, you'll face burnout. That's where your brain and your body just start to shut down. And when we start to get into those zones, we start to create a phenomenon that we call presenteeism. So presenteeism is a new, uh, it's one of the buzzwords that's out there. And essentially what it means is people are showing up. So, so for instance, showing up at work, they're present, but their minds are absent. They're not engaged. And when people are not engaged, it creates a lot of problems. And that may be at home, it may be at work, it may be in a person's entire life where they're just not being present. They're not checked in. They're half checked out. And the estimated cost in Canada alone for this is $140 billion per year. So this is not a small problem. This is a huge problem for our society, for business in general, and for our healthcare system in particular. Now, if MBD goes on for long enough, it can lead to other problems. Problems such as depression, which affects 4.5 million Canadians. This is not a small number, and, and if you happen to be one of our uh, uh, people listening south of the border here, take these numbers and multiply them by 10. The stats are almost exactly the same across the border for North Americans. We create insomnia, which will affect 4 million Canadians. Uh, panic attacks, anxiety disorders reign supreme. This is where our serotonin gets out of balance, uh, often associated with depression and insomnia as well. Oftentimes what happens from these is people start to try and find ways to self-medicate, and this leads to addictions. It can be uh, addictions to food, to exercise. Obviously, there's the the, uh, the drugs, alcohol, whether it's prescription drugs or recreational drugs. Many of these things are people's attempt to balance out their own brain chemistry. And unfortunately, uh, the nature of most addictions is that uh, after a while, you need more and more to try and balance things out because they're not getting at the root cause and the root issues of these problems. Over time, it can eventually create what we call stress and long-term disability. You just can't function very well anymore. Just basic day-to-day -day living is enough to keep your brain in fight-or-flight mode. And these issues, on top of the $140 billion from the presenteeism, these also will cost our business and healthcare system over $33 billion per year. This is a very expensive epidemic we're dealing with here. So what are some things we can do? Well, first, just learn to relax. That can be one of the major things that can have a profound effect for us. So here's how you relax. This is what we call the physiology of relaxation. So uh, before you get into visualization, meditation, all those sorts of things, which I think are fantastic and very valuable, uh, here's a way you can signal your body to relax. These are cues that when you do them, they're like a direct line into your relaxation center. First thing is to breathe deeply from your belly. When you're abdominal breathing, when you're belly breathing, uh, it's a signal to your brain that you're not in fight or 